Hello YouTube family. I'm super excited to be sharing this video with you about this awesome, inspirational, and fantastic saint. Or she's not quite a saint yet. She's a saint in the making. She's a blessed. Or her story is amazing. It's going to blow you away. And in fact, this little girl was blind, hunchback, crippled, really ugly as they say, and she had everything set against her. I'm giving this video during 2020 in the coronavirus time where a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are down and out. They know people who have died. They know people who are sick. They've lost their jobs. They don't know what they're going to do for money. Suffering, suffering, suffering all around us. And that's why I chose to do this particular video on Blessed Margaret of Castello, who suffered throughout her whole entire life and created one of the most inspirational lives that have ever lived. This is her story. Blessed Margaret grew up in the 13th century and her dad was a military commander. This father, Paricio was his name, he wanted to pass this on to his son. He could not wait to have a son. And in fact, he threw one of the biggest parties and balls in the land that anyone had ever seen in anticipation of having a son once he found out that his wife was pregnant. And shortly after the ball, shortly after this huge party across the land, they had their firstborn. And it wasn't a son. It was a daughter. And not only was it a daughter, but this little poor helpless baby was blind and hunchbacked and crippled and lame. And she was going to be this way for the rest of her life and their parents wanted nothing to do with her. So they locked her away in a far part of the castle where she could never get out, never see anybody, and no one would ever know she was there. They'd never know she had a child or what happened. But long story short, little Margaret crept out of the open door with her cane when she was about six years old and she came across a noblewoman who saw her and the noblewoman said are you blind little girl and she said oh yes my lady I am and she said why do you call me a lady and she said oh because you talk differently than all the other women I hear in the distance and at that moment her parents walked in and saw her talking to a stranger which was mortifying to them and their biggest fear Paricio and his wife, they were a proud family. They wanted everyone to look highly on them. So what happened next is amazing and atrocious. They didn't want their little girl to be seen. So what they did is they built her a prison. They built her a little cubicle made out of stone, about four feet by four feet. It's just a little room with no benches, nothing, no doors, a small little window, and it was built right next to the church so that she could look through the tiny window and see mass going on but nobody could see her in return. And if matters weren't bad enough, they didn't make it at the church next to the castle where everybody who was anybody came. They put it a mile away at the church in the middle of the woods to which only peasants used to go and nobody would even see her or know who she was. So this little girl, imagine that, being six years old and thrown into a little prison and nobody ever sees you or talks to you, no friends, no family, nothing. And you're alone and you're crying and you're scared and sometimes it got really cold in the winters and this little girl cried her eyes out and sobbed that her parents rejected her and got rid of her. The only person who saw her was the local priest who gave food to her. He was the one who brought her food. And sometimes Margaret would cry to him and say, Father, look at me. You know, does God love me? And look at what my parents did. And she would just cry and cry. And the priest would evangelize her and share God's love with her and teach her about Jesus. Now, Margaret, it said, had a luminous, brilliant mind where she could comprehend things that most adults couldn't comprehend, even at a young age. So six, seven, eight years old, the priest is talking to her about Jesus and how the body that she has, which is crippled, means nothing. It's nothing. We could have a beautiful body and lose it the next day in an accident. But he said the soul, which lasts forever, is everything. And he told her to focus on your soul. Because look at Christ, he said. Christ was broken for us on the cross. His body was beaten and broken out of love for us. So we, in turn, can offer up our brokenness in life, our sufferings, 
back to him because he offered up his sufferings out of love for us. And this caused Blessed Margaret's heart to be set on fire. She just wanted to give herself up to Christ as Christ gave himself up to her. And she started praying for hours every single day and watching the Mass every day. And she would even confess her sins and give herself little penances and even fast sometimes. This little girl was praying like an adult at a young age. And she stayed in that prison for 13 years until the region of Massa Trebaria, which is where her father was the military defender of, came under attack. They didn't want anything to happen to the church or to her, so they moved her to a new prison under the plaza, underground. It was literally like a dungeon, and there was only a bench in there and just food twice a day, and it smelled, and it was ugly, and they left their kid in a prison for another year. So Margaret was in this prison total, both prisons, for 14 years. Her life started off as one of suffering, as one of difficulty, and as one in anguish. I mean, she had it rough. And we think we complain. We think we're ugly. We think we have it bad. We have to miss a meal. Our friends are mean to us. Blessed Margaret and many other people in this world have it far worse than this. But things started to look up for Margaret once somebody over in the region of Costello said that they had received a miracle. Many people flocked to Costello to see this miracle and they received miracles of themselves. So many people were being healed, having miraculous cures at this one particular site, that her parents, who didn't even really believe in God, at least her dad really didn't, or they were mad at God for this whole Margaret thing, they wouldn't even talk to God, think about God, nothing. They decided to take their kid, Margaret, to get a cure. And they said, oh, little Margaret, we want you to pray for a cure. We want you to pray really hard to your Jesus. And Margaret said, okay, Daddy, I will. Long story short, they brought her there and she wasn't cured because the dad, he thought for sure he, she was going to be cured. He was a military leader. He was a nobleman. His status was great. So clearly, God had to look favorably upon him, even though God says in the Bible that he doesn't look at status at all and it means nothing to him. But the bottom line is he didn't heal her and the parents were so mad at God that they left Margaret there in a foreign part of the country. They rode back on their horses and left this blind little crippled girl on the stairs of the church never to see her again, ever. This little girl who can't even see had a cane where she had to walk around. She stayed in the church all day and praying for that cure that God never gave her. But she always prayed that at the end of the prayer that God's holy will be done. He, she only wanted what God wanted. It's an amazing story that this girl, now 20 years old, had such a brilliant faith in Christ. She loved him and would give him anything out of love for him. The priest came in and found Margaret on the church steps. And he said, little girl, it's time to go home now. And she said, okay, father, no problem. And he said, I hope you understand. I don't want thieves to come in and rob the church, so have fun. Well, not a problem, father, no problem. Long story short, she told the priest that she didn't know where her parents were, and so he did some digging, and long story short, Margaret was going to become homeless for the next two years, because her parents left her. This little crippled girl was homeless, and two people found her the next morning on the church stairs, and they were asking about her and what she's doing, and they brought her to all the beggars who hid out in one part of the city, and they taught her how to be homeless. They taught her how to beg, this poor little girl. And then one night, it was particularly cold in the winter, and they were going to go into a stable. They had gotten permission to go into the stable and spend the night there. Margaret was so excited. She said, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go into this stable. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how much God loves us. And all the homeless people were shocked that she could even say that. They said, look at you, Margaret. You think God loves you? Look at us, Margaret. How could you say that God loves us? He's not doing anything for us. Why would you be excited to go into the stable? And she said, oh, because my Savior Jesus was born in a stable as well. He had nothing either, and he had to go to a stable. And I have the opportunity to spend just one night like he did. And God loves us because, and she went on to explain to them the great love of God. And she was so nice, kind, friendly, dear-hearted, that people started to really listen to her. And her legend started to spread. Everybody started talking about the blind girl who was begging, but who loved God so much. 
This even got to the ears of the bishop because the stories of Margaret and her heroic sanctity, the long hours she would pray on her knees, and just this, the, the great stories that people told about her even came to some cloistered nuns. And the nuns invited her to become part of the convent. And Margaret was overjoyed that she was going to have the potential to become a nun. But the problem with this is that Margaret, once she got there, she gave her all to it. She prayed for hours every day. She meditated. She fasted. She did penances. She lived it 100%. But unfortunately, the cloister itself had relaxed the rules that they had to take vows for. So they weren't living their vows very well. They were living lax, luxury lives. And they were talking, even though they were cloistered, and all of these other things. And they resented Margaret for making them look bad. And it was a constant source of contention in the convent. And the mother superior was always telling Margaret, stop doing penances. You're making people look bad. Are you sure you're just not trying to be holier than everybody? And long story short, they cast Margaret back out to the street and let her be homeless again because they didn't want to be embarrassed by her and she wouldn't stop living for Jesus. And they talked bad about her behind her back. They told the people around town what a rude person she was and how she thought she was better than everybody. But Margaret, she said, they're probably right. Over time, the townspeople saw how Margaret talked about them kindly, and they saw how the nuns talked about her, and they realized that Margaret was actually the one speaking the truth. And this huge following of Margaret started because she would serve people, she would help people, she would counsel people, and everybody started to love her. And even some rich people adopted her here and there, and she would switch houses and live with them, even though she felt uncomfortable living in such luxury. But eventually she joined the Mentaladas, which is a third order of St. Dominic. It's a Dominican order where you don't get ordained a priest or you don't become a nun or a sister, but you do take vows, permanent vows, and you join these people in a non-priestly nun type of way. It's called the third order. And she became one of these Dominican um, mentaladas. And through it, she was supposed to pray, do penance, serve the poor, and serve God. It was everything that she ever dreamed of. And now she could do it all the time. And she did it to the max. Everyone from around the city who wanted little Margaret at any time, night or day, if they called for her, she would hobble over there on her little cane and she would help them. She would give them food. She would bring medicine to the sick. She would comfort the dying. There was no task too far, too late, or too big for little Margaret. And she just loved helping people and serving people. And everyone around the region knew of this little saint. She even convinced the mental us to go into the deep prison of the city, which was disgusting. People were dying. They didn't have enough food. They didn't have enough clothes. And she saw these people who weren't even being treated like humans and said, I want to help them. And even though no one wanted to help her, she eventually convinced the other sisters of hers to go with her. And they made it a ministry to serve those in prison. Then Margaret came across this woman who was going blind with a tumor in her eye. And she couldn't afford to get medical treatment. And so she was going blind and there was nothing she could do about it. So she sought out Margaret and said, please pray for me. You're blind. God will listen to you. You're holy. And Margaret looked at her and said, oh, sweet sister, how blessed you are to be going blind. And she said, blessed? What do you mean by that? I'm not blessed. I mean, I brought my daughter to a doctor because I wanted to get her help and I didn't want her to be sick. And you're saying that this is okay? I want the doctor. And Margaret replied and said, but God doesn't want you to be spiritually sick, so he's giving you this gift. And long story short, this mostly blind woman was healed by Margaret because she couldn't accept it and she was crying and sobbing and Margaret healed her. And from then on, Margaret had this gift of doing miracles, many, many miracles, so much that her fame spread abroad. And she even prayed so devoutly that she used to levitate, which means she used to rise up into the air when she prayed. And people from all around flocked just to see Margaret receive her counsel. St. Augustine once said something that sums up Margaret's entire life. He said, when one truly loves, one does not suffer. And if they do suffer, the suffering itself is even loved. And that sums up the whole life of Margaret. She loved God with a passion. She loved people 
with a passion. She loved to serve and she gave her life to the service of everybody. I mean, think of us. How much do we complain about missing food, about the food doesn't taste good, or we missed our meal, or they messed it up at the restaurant wrong, or we missed our favorite TV show, or one of our friends made fun of us, or we can't go on our vacation, or this coronavirus is messing everything up. I mean, do we really have it as bad as Margaret did? Do we really have it as bad as this little crippled saint who has a hunchback? I mean, she changed the world around her with all the circumstances that she has. I know people who say they're so ugly and they're kind of an outcast of society and people don't like them and they don't even like to look at themselves. And I tell them about Margaret of Costello. It doesn't matter who you are what you look like, what your status is in life, because God does not look at status, doesn't matter anything, you have the ability to change the world around you if you love and serve God like Margaret did. And I don't. I don't even come close to what she did. And she humbles me. This small little girl who didn't even get up to a normal height humbles me, who is supposed to be this big speaker. And I need to learn from her. At the end of her life, she died and they were going to bury her. But there was a riot outside the church because they wanted her to be buried in the church because she was going to be a saint. But the priests refused, the bishop refused, so people were literally getting up in arms about this, so much so that there was a, almost like a hunger games going on outside of the church. And long story short is that the little uh, mat that they were carrying Margaret on fell and everyone stopped. Margaret's laying on the ground, dead. And her parents brought this crippled girl to Margaret and said, Margaret, if you're in heaven now, please pray for us. Please pray for my little girl who's crippled because you too were crippled. And all of a sudden it said that Margaret's hand moved over and touched the girl and she was immediately and completely cured. And of course, this only helped to spread the message of Margaret of Costello, who was buried in the church with no doubt after that. And this girl was looked at in her casket many, many, many centuries later, and she is totally still today incorrupt, meaning her flesh did not decompose, and she still looks like the day she died. Another miracle to cap off a whole life of miracles and beautiful living by this beautiful little saint, saint in the making. And I need to look at my life, get down on my knees and say, what am I doing wrong? How can I be more like that? How can I stop complaining about little things in life when she didn't even complain about the big things in her life, and Christ didn't complain about the big sufferings in his life, and he was happy to suffer out of love for us. Can we be more happy to give ourselves out of love for him? If you liked this video, please share it with others, especially during this coronavirus time. Please share it with others. Let others know that there's hope, even in suffering, even in the worst circumstances, Christ is there. Christ works. I mean, he worked miracles. This lady was blind and she healed another person who was going blind miraculously. I mean, it was unbelievable. That's how God works if we believe. Please, please like this video. Please share it with others. And please consider supporting our ministry so we can take this message and the message of a hundred saints and the message of our church for 2,000 years and bring it to a whole world that is desperately in need of Jesus Christ. God bless you.